What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactful Bass. And today we finally got a break in this atmospheric river that's just been drenching Northern California, flooding everything. So we got a little bit of sunshine. So I busted out the boat and started prepping for spring fishing. You know, I got some trips coming up. I'm gonna be gone on the road for a couple weeks. And I wanted to kind of show you guys how I prep some of my boxes. We always get questions on how we store this or how we store that or where we put this. So come along as we go through my boat and I show you guys how I store my tackle. So one thing that, that's super important, especially when you're on the road and traveling, is uh, adding added sec security to your boat. So this is a locker bar. It, uh, you know, you can lock your compartments, but this is just an added security to keep people out and protect your expensive fishing gear. Anything that deters someone is worth it in my mind. So today I'm gonna go through my compartments, kind of show you guys how I store and organize my stuff in my boat. So in this driver's side compartment, this is where I keep all of my ropes, spare pedestal seat, I got spare spools of line, you know you can go to uh, the dollar store and get these little, little compartments or little plastic crates that really keep things organized. Here I have all of my big spools. If I'm sitting here and I need to spool up a bunch of reels, this thing's sweet, I can go. I have all my braid, 65, 50, 30, 16, uh, 12, and then I have a big spool of fluorocarbon. And then my, my locker bar system sits in here as well. All right, let's jump in to the other rod locker. Now this is where I actually store all of my rods. You can see I have the moose rack in here. Some guys actually pull that out. You can get more rods in there. I just don't like all my rods and reels laying on top of each other and, and rubbing. So I actually left mine in. You can see all of my rods have rod socks. That makes it super easy for getting your rods in and out of the rod locker. No damaged guides, no dinged up tips, no nicked line. So let's jump into some of these boxes. I'm gonna put the, the camera on the tripod, kind of go through some of these boxes, the ones I've already prepped for, for traveling this year and show you what I've done. All right, so one of the things about the Champion 210 is the storage. I absolutely love the storage. You can, you can put a ton of stuff in this thing. You know, I'm just now starting to get all my stuff ready. So I only have eight or 10 boxes in here, some, some, uh, some gear, but we'll go through that and you guys can get an idea of how I store my stuff. So we'll just kind of go through, the, go through this from top to bottom. Worm bags. This is how I store. If I have any worms that I have uh, a lot of, you know, like robo worm, I use a ton of their four and a half and six inch drop shot worms. So I actually, um, I have a whole 40 bags of robo worms. These are all the six inch. And right here, Actually, these are all the six inch. Right there is all the four and a half inch. So you can see I have all my favorite colors all neatly organized in here and ready to go. These bags really, really work if you have a lot of one worm. If you're fishing just a lot of random stuff, these Bass Mafia bags are awesome. So I have a bag here with just a bunch of finesse worms. I got some drop shot worms, some Ned worms, some little Kai Tex. So this is just a do everything bag. I just threw a bunch of stuff that was laying around into this bag. If you guys do get these, which I highly recommend, leave a little bit of air in your bag so they don't fully smash and mess up your worms. You wanna have some kind of cushion in there. 
So that's pretty much how I store my worms. Like I said, if I have a lot of worms of one type, I will leave them in that, that, uh, that KVD, that worm bag. And this is, this is actually the, the 40. They actually make one that's half this size that I have that holds 20 bags. So you can keep all of your uh, Ned rigs, like the last tech stuff that he doesn't want to go in another Plano box because of the material or store with other baits, give it its own bag. This next bag is something I'm kind of playing around with. You know, I haven't found the perfect system yet for storing all of my specialty hooks and terminal tackle like split rings and things like that. So what I've done, I went to the dollar store and got a bunch of Ziploc bags. So inside this bag, and, and by the way, these bags are sweet. They're super durable. I've had this one now for almost two years. It's got an inner Ziploc and then an outer zipper. So things are super sealed. But uh, I just went and I don't know if you guys can see this or not. I took and bought a bunch of Ziplocs and put like things in their own Ziplocs. So if I need a specific hook, I grab the bag. If I need a beast hook, here they are. All, they're all in this bag. So I can just go through weighted beasts, all of my hyper wire split rings. Uh, it just makes organization very easy and it's not it's not all smashed into one box. Um, you know, here's all of my, my owner. These are my weedless drop shot hooks, worm hooks. Um, big straight shank worm hooks. But the, all of my terminal tackle and specialty hooks, spare Ned rig hooks, uh, I've, I've done this way. And it's not a perfect system. You know, I've had boxes in the past. I've I've tried uh, putting everything in a box and organizing it. Uh, I just tend to run out of room or I get water in the box, moisture in the box, and then everything's shot. So this is how I'm, I'm gonna do it this year. It's how I did it last year and didn't have any issues. It made it really easy to get to the things that I needed to get to. So enough with that. You guys have seen before, or in the past, how I organized my hook box. Uh, I just made a new one, went through and checked all my hooks, made sure I didn't have any rusty hooks. You know, we spend a lot of money on hooks. That is, when it's all said and done, that is one of the most important things to penetrating that fish in mouth and getting them in the boat. So you wanna keep them sharp. Um, I really like these waterproof boxes by Plano. You know, they make a ton of different boxes, but my high-end gear, like crankbaits and lipless cranks, those types of baits, expensive stuff, jerk baits, you know, Vision 110s, those sorts of things, I will, I will spend the extra money and get the nicer box, a little more sturdy, and it's waterproof. But we can see what I did here. I have my red hooks up top, and then I have my uh, 1X, my 2X, 3X uh, hooks, all based, or all organized, by size keeps it really easy when you need to change hooks on uh, on your baits coming up I'm just gonna dig in here guys and and uh, show you guys this stuff again I already talked to you guys about these boxes I put all of my my 1.5s all of my specialty crankbaits uh, I put them in boxes like this we'll talk about some of this stuff here shortly again jackhammers 110, Stacy's, all of those baits that you're spending a lot of money in, you don't want to get damaged or get a bunch of rust on, invest in good boxes. One more. Uh, let's break it up. Let's talk about uh, storing soft swim baits, which is a question that I get all the time. How do you store your soft swim baits in the boat? Very easy, guys. Just like that. You know, when I storm at home, you guys have seen that video I've done. I did probably, I don't know, six or seven years ago, how I hang them on pegboard with the, the tool organizer. When I am in the boat and I am using soft swim baits, that's how I store them. Tails don't get bent. They don't rub up on everything. And the fins stay straight. Folds in half. 
Velcro's over. Super easy to store your baits. Same thing, you guys have seen this before, by glide baits, by expensive glide baits, the baits that I have uh, you know, custom painted or paid a lot of money for, I don't want them to be sliding around in a box or against each other and messing up the detail of the bait, the paint of the bait, dull in the hooks, or, um, or any of that. So that is how I store soft swim baits. That is how I store uh, hard swim baits, glide baits, expensive baits. Huddleston's the same. You know, these are all magnums, and I have a whole thing of Huddleston's as well. A few more boxes in here that I want to talk about. All right, the next box I want to talk about is the Bass Mafia box. These things are super durable, waterproof. I mean, you could drive a car over them. Uh, so I use these for my lipless cranks. These are my babies. You guys know how much Matt and I love lipless cranks, LB500s, Mega Bat, uh, just all of them. So I keep that in a very special box. Heavy duty, no issues. Alabama rigs, always a pain trying to store those. This is another box by Plano. It has these inserts right here where you can put the head of your Alabama rig in and then all of your wires tuck in and it sucks them down so you can have them neat and organized in your box. Another little tool you guys will wanna get storing your A-rigs, this is called the A-rigger by the Red One Systems. It pops on and slides down and keeps all of your wires organized. When you, and in the rod locker as well. You know, when you, when you have A-rigs all over the place, you got three hooks, five hooks, two hooks, whatever state you're in, they, they just tend to get tangled up and, and scratch up your gear. So definitely get your guys, get your guys uh, a nice A-rig box. And I'm kind of speeding through this. We're losing daylight here. And uh, I will link, just like every video down below in the video description, I will link all these boxes and what I use them for. The last box that I'm gonna talk about, I don't even know what this box is called but it's really cool because it is all slats. You can customize all of your uh, different compartments, your little compartments. You can make them super small or, or really large, totally up to you. But uh, I use this one for my Ned Rig box. I have all my hook sizes here, all of my favorite baits there. Again, I don't have any of the Z-Man, the Elastex in here. I have those in a specific bag because they do not play well with other types of plastic or Plano boxes, but these boxes are really good too. Sorry, there's not very many places to film right now. Everything's flooded and, and parks and all that stuff's closed. All the launch ramps are closed except for this one right over here. So we are stuck in a parking lot. Um, this box comes with slanted dividers as well. So it works well with big crankbaits. You can angle them, the bills stick this way. You angle them and you can fit more in each row. So I do put some of my um, 6XDs, 5XDs, those types of crankbaits in a box like this as well. So that is boxes. That's how I store most of my stuff. If it's, if it's not that important, you know, plastics or uh, you know, cheaper baits, I will go with a, just a traditional 3700 Plano box. But if it's something special or something expensive, I go with the higher end, more durable, waterproof box and uh, try and keep it fairly simple. So let's, uh, you guys saw the compartments over here. Let's jump back to the back. I'll show you guys how I store the, my, what I have in my back compartments. And uh, again, they're not fully complete. This is just the first day of sunshine. We got rain here tomorrow, so just starting to get prepared. So we'll jump back there. I'll show you guys where I, where I store my life jackets and uh, tools and all that stuff and uh, give you guys some advice on that. You know, one thing I forgot to talk about is these guys right here. You guys saw how I store my, my big spools for spooling big reels and uh, complete reels. If I'm putting on you know, 200 yards of braid, I'm gonna use that little spooling station in there. These are how I store my leader line. So this is all of my mono, 40 all the way down to 12. 40, 30, 25, 20, 15, and 12. 
That's my mono. That's my uh, my big stuff and my mono filament for glide baits, different things like that. And then here is my fluorocarbon, typically 15, 12, 10, 8, 6, and 4. So these are the boxes I use when I am tying leaders to braid. Kind of skipped through that before. I, I showed you guys the, the big spool and the uh, how I store the, the bulk spools, but that's how I store my leader line and my individual 200 yard spools. All right, one more thing that I forgot to cover. These little guys right here. These little boxes are cool. They have built-in compartments that are that are molded into the box itself, but you can get real small uh, compartments. So I keep a handful of these in the boat. I have one for shaky heads, one for drop shots. You know, I have all of my weights, hooks, mosquito light hooks, weedless hooks, all that stuff in a drop shot box. So I'll have a shaky head box. I'll have a different type of worm box, but these little boxes right here are, are great for storing all of your technique specific terminal tackle. All right, so back here, uh, I have two large compartments. These are the live wells. You know, it's like 40, 46 gallons or 50 gallons, something like that. Giant live wells for giant bass. So that's, I took the divider out, but uh, hopefully can fill those up with some big ones this year. So. A lot of times I'm on the boat by myself. So I'm in the driver's seat. It kind of uh, makes the boat kind of idle off balance. So I try and keep all my heavier stuff over on this side, on the passenger side. That way it kind of squares that boat up and makes it sit flat in the water. So on this side real quickly, I have a bag with all of my, with spare reels, spare handles, different types of spinning reels and casting reels. I have life jackets and then towels to, uh, to wipe down the boat, to clean up stuff. I have some, uh, some paper towels and then these little guys right here, these will save you a ton of time. Uh, you can get those at the gas station. Those are just little, uh, little funnels, paper funnels in case you forget one at home. Now over here, this is, this is where I keep all of my tools, my important stuff. So in this, in this compartment, I have a jumper. You know, you never want to be out on the water without battery power. This is a, a wireless jumper. You charge it and you can jump your cranking battery. I got a prop wrench gloves, jumper cables. You know, if you ever out on the water and you have a dead cranking battery and you don't have a jumper, you can typically jump your cranking battery from your troll motor battery. So keep a set of jumper cables in your boat. Got a spare prop, cleaning stuff. I gotta, I gotta replenish this, but this is your, your fuel additives, your stuff you put in your gas to make your boat run better. And then one of the most important things is a good stainless steel uh, tool kit. I got different prop nuts in here, stainless steel tools, zip ties, electrical tape, channel locks, pliers, all sorts of stuff in case I break down on the water, I'll be able to fix things and get my boat going again. So you guys, looking forward to getting out and hitting the open road this this year. You know, Matt and I were trying to, uh, we you know, we were trying to do it last year, and uh, obviously with the accident and everything, kind of kind of threw a wrench into things. But thank you guys for all your questions. You know, uh, it's not a perfect system, but that is how I do my organization. You know. Here in a couple weeks, I'll have this thing packed to the top. I'll have all my stuff spooled up and tied up, all the hooks uh, swapped out. But uh, there you have it, guys. That is how I store some of my stuff in my bass boat. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. If you guys like this video or learned something from it, hit the like button. Remember, subscribe to our channel. We're doing three videos a week for you. We appreciate you guys. Have a good one.